Abbey Timeline task mining solution contains two main components, one of which is Abbey Timeline, which we'll get to as we get into the analytical portion of the demo. The other is a recording infrastructure, which you see on screen. Now, while recorders are running on client desktops, they're all controlled here through the central administrative interface. Users who had the recorders running on their machines will not have their work affected whatsoever by the recording sessions. For legal reasons, we may need to display to the user that they're being recorded, but that's all. So there's several parts to the recording interface. Here we have the ability to, to define our recording templates or policies. So as you see, we can record, we create any number of different recording policies for certain cases. We have the ability to define when we start and stop a recording, whether or not we're going to be recording screenshots along with those task logs. We can choose whether to include or exclude certain applications or URLs which should or should never be recorded. For example, if we know Skype or some other social app is not a part of our business, a user has an expectation of privacy when they're using that application. We can choose to exclude those applications and never record the user session when they're in that part of the screen. On the other side, the best legal option is to specify which app should be included in the recordings and we'll ensure that we only record the logs when the user is using those part of the screen, for example, our CRM or our ERP tool, we know those are the applications we want recordings for. If we are recording screenshots for the analyst, the field redaction capability will become extremely valuable. If the analyst is looking for more contextual information as to what the user is doing on the screen, apart from this, just the, the, the log, we have a couple of different policies which allow us to blur or redact text information from those screenshots. One, we can blur every piece of information or text we find on the screen. So we don't care whether it's in a web application, a Windows form, or the user's doing terminal emulation. We'll find any characters on the screen and blur them. Secondarily, we, ha we can redact only data related to input fields. So we'll only blur out the data that a user might be entering into that screen. The third policy is we won't blur anything at all and that screenshot will come through just as it looks on the user's screen. Now, the recorders view gives us a look at all the different recorders who are, which are installed within our organization. They're all reporting back to this service. And what I can do here is assign different templates, those recording policies. We can start or stop recordings. I can take a look at the logs that have been collected from any, 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 any machine. I can also get a current status, whether that person's online, offline, are we in a recording state? When were they added, last seen, and so on. So recorders throughout the day are all recording logs. And what a log is, is a single user session, whether that be the minute that they log into their machine in the, in the morning till they log off at night or some other specific start or stop time. We have a list of all the logs that have been collected here. The users then can go in and review the data that's been collected via any log. Once we're happy and that review process is done, we can choose to select one or more of these logs and load them into timeline for the analysis. So this is purposely built. We, we want to do a push mechanism. Since these recordings and these logs are going to be stored within the client network, we're looking to reduce customer concern. Only when we've reviewed them do we then push them into timeline for the analysis, essentially give the users the control of exactly what data they push into the system and when. Now, once that data is loaded into timeline, we want to start the analysis, okay? In this project, we don't yet have any tasks broken out as a part of this log. It's just a constant stream of clicks and types and copies and pastes and so on that that user might have made throughout the day. So we now need to make sense of this and break this into logical tasks. Just to give you a look, here's an example at a screenshot that has been redacted. I can get the con context of where the user is on the screen, but can't pull any information off of that screenshot. 
So we have a number of different ways to break this log down into those tasks, one of which is completely automatic. That's to use machine learning. We'll look for similar patterns of operations or sequences, and I want to emphasize the similar term there. We're not looking for identical patterns of, uh, of execution. This is very possible that none of these tasks will be done exactly identically, but if they match closely enough, let's consider it a repeatable task and use it for our analysis. The idea here is that we want to use multiple logs against many user sessions. That way we have enough data to be able to compare against the different ways different users are completing tasks. And then the user can, of course, review and modify at any point if necessary. On the other side, we can not use the automatic machine learning, but we can manually go through and define a sequence as a task. I'm gonna walk you through an example of that here in a moment. We're gonna go through and make sure that you know the tasks look logical and we define a start and stop time. The third option, the user can use timelines query interface to define a specific condition or a pattern sequence of steps that we're interested in defining a task and have it go through the logs to find those specific scenarios. As I mentioned, let's create a task here out of this log. So what I'm looking for really is just the start and end stop step for any given task. So we're going to define this click new item as the start of my expense report task. Okay. Now it's just a matter of going through and finding when that user finished creating this expense report. And we'll go down and click on the save button and we'll choose to set that as the end. Now what's happened here is it's gone through and find, found five instances of this expense report task within this log. What I can do is I can apply and transform this to send it for uh, further analysis. I can collapse all those that we found and go off and find more unique tasks, all right? But I can do a number of different things there knowing that I've got these five expense, expense report tasks found within the log. So let's look at when we get into the analysis mode, okay? Once we have our tasks defined, and within this project, you see we have five different tasks listed here. Each one has been completed multiple times in our logs, what this table is doing is ranking these tasks based on their suitable suitability for automation based on two factors. And we'll always have time and complexity, but we also have a third, which hasn't been configured here, but we can also use cost. We haven't defined the cost, but we can include the bottom line into this analysis if we've configured it as so. So our log coverage, this is how much gain we can get from automation. How much time has the user spent in on this task as a percentage of all the log time that we have? I can gain X hours back by automating this task. This is counterbalanced by the complexity of the task, numbered between zero for the easiest task to automate and one for the for the mo more difficult. So essentially, how uniquely is that task completed? How many different applications does it touch? The more variations to how the task is done and the more unique applications that we're touching, inherently is going to equate to a more complex implementation cycle from an automation engagement. Now the chart below is essentially showing us the same data. The gain value on the x-axis along with the difficulty for automation on the Y. So what a client typically will do is start from the bottom right here and work your way up the slope, right? We want to start with those that are going to give us the most return, couple with the, the most straightforward to automate, and then work our way up to the top left. The last thing to mention here, I can use any of the other process intelligence tools within Timeline to uh, enhance my analysis here. So if I need to go into Timelines or look at my bottleneck view or bring up my paths, this is all available to me so that I can get a better feel for exactly what type of an engagement we're getting into in looking